Doug, what the fuck? How did you get so fucking successful? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure, but don't you worry every day that it's going to end? I mean, I'm just, fe- I, I wake up pretty much every day terrified. Uh, but I think well, it's already start. ended for me in case you haven't <laughs> seen my view counts recently. I, you want to know, you want to know why I wanted to kill myself today? Yeah, I didn't really. I don't don't fucking call anybody. But here's why. Here's why I hated myself today. Since it's since it's important that I talk about talk to you about mental health on this show. Zach, scroll up on Doug's channel to his Land Rover um, Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography Dynamic Edition, uh, which he which I presume was that the same press car I had, Doug? Yeah, I've got it now. Actually, it's still sitting in front of my head. Isn't it rad? Yeah, I was it's impressed a, with it. It's a pretty fucking good truck. I really like yeah. it a lot. So. Yeah. I reviewed it and I, I had a I, I copied your title style long ago so I had a, you know yeah. a similar kind of title <laughs> and I hit like f- like 55k and I was like well yeah it's kind of an obscure like whatever car and you had it a dup a day and you're like under just under 600k <laughs> right now and it makes me kind of hate you even yeah. though I love you even though we're friends and you're one of my favorite people and I'm um, I couldn't be more proud of your success. I still well, kind of hate you. First off, I appreciate that so much because a lot of people in our business don't like me all that much for that reason. And I never, I don't know, you know, and, and, but they still hate me and, and I get that. No, I love you, day. but I have a jealous hatred of you, <laughs> especially because you have three and a half times the number of subscribers we have. <laughs> and yet you're, you get many more of your subscribers to actually watch your shit. I don't know how this happened. I really don't, but I, I do fear that it, you know, well, and that's that's always kind of a fear of mine. But like, yeah, the videos they do pretty well, don't they? I I, I don't know. I truly, <laughs> what, honestly, I, now like, I really are, fucking hate you. You just said that know, sentence, and I wanted to jump yeah. through the Zoom call and punch people you in the face. Doug, did you do fencing, like, fencing class people when you were a kid? Me all the time. They say, you know, why are your views so much more popular than other people and all that? And I I truly, I mean, do you know? I truly and honestly do not like going through the quirks. I think is a big part of it. I think yeah. there's a lot of people who drive the car, and I think there's fewer people who will actually show you what it's, you know, yeah. what every little button and stuff is like. That helps. Um, I. But I'm, I don't know. I just, I, I am engaging with the fans. I think that helps. I, I truly and meaningfully enjoy their, their presence in my world. Um, but I think also, that's I, probably it. If it was, the, if there was the uh, biggest difference, I have to say, I have to believe that it's you <laughs> like people. That's got to be it. It's got to be that you like people because yeah. you liking people must make them react in a way that I, I just drive them away because <laughs> I don't like people and that's why I work by myself in the middle of the desert and it's just the reality of it and I think you do but I mean I remember yeah, when I first came on one of the first one of the things I asked you was do you people recognize you on the street and you were like yeah you know it happens and people are nice whatever and it, it didn't really happen for me at that time now of course it does pretty frequently and I enjoy those interactions like truly enjoy those interactions so much not because it's like oh cool look how cool i am but each time i always ask them what are you driving you know where are you from and i have made legitimate best friends that way one of the people who was one of the groomsmen in my wedding was someone who came up to me my closest friends here in san diego are people who have just you know come up to me on the street it's like yeah okay and then we you know we have dinner and then we have another dinner and then the next thing you know you know we're, we're, we're double dating and and i just i don't know i i truly find it enjoyable to to get perspectives from people. That's interesting. I think, I don't know, maybe, I mean, I, I, I have overall the interactions I have with fans on the street are very good. I, it's not, I'm definitely not annoyed by people who come up and say hi on the street yeah. by any means. Um, I definitely get overwhelmed with, with social media and the, yeah. the unfiltered thoughts of hundreds of thousands of people like that becomes overwhelming, but on a one-on-one level on the street, like it's totally cool. Um, I definitely like meet, I make friends at car shows sometimes, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's because do you and your wife, like I have trouble bringing car people into my like my like home other life maybe. And I don't know. Like I, I don't know if I could, if I was like, yeah, I met a fan on the street and Hannah, will you come on a dinner date with them? Like she'd be like, are you serious? Like I bet uh, I, I them a little first. You know, I make sure that, you know, I have a meal with them or something before I like. <laughs> oh, you pre-screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And my wife does the same when she meets people. I'm like, I don't want to have, I can't be involved in meeting someone random. You know, I I got, I got stuff to do, but, um, (laughs) but no, yeah, I, I got no problem with it. In fact, it is the primary way that I make friends. Um, cause you know, I just moved to a new place and as you know, it's hard when you move to a new place to like meet new people and all that. And that's a lot of the people that I've 
met have just kind of become friends. I know it's weird. I probably, it's very unusual, um, but it's, it's great. I think it's the coolest thing in the world because it's like a built-in way to be able to, you know, have some friends in the world. It's, so. yeah, I suppose. I, 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 I think your personality matches that approach perfectly and i think the your success on the internet has has been the result of that what i'm most impressed with is that you're able to get results like like for instance like i my the results of my videos are i've been operating under the 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 credo that the metal drives it right like there's this many people that know who i am okay and if i drive something that a lot of people want to see a lot of people will want to see it and if i drive something that is fucking off the wall weird not seo good then less people will watch it and what i've been most impressed with with you is you managed to drive a lot of traffic to cars that i think would typically be seo poison and it's not just just a catchy title it's cars yeah. that people are genuinely not searching this for this is an and, Audi oh boy and and what is it about your approach that allows that tra- yeah. the traffic that's to be a, driven that's those a kind really of cars good question that's and i think i wonder about that too you know and i kind of try to push the envelope i filmed that oldsmobile silhouette and i was like are people gonna watch this toyota previa and the answer is i love a previa yeah. they're the best people actually watch that stuff I think one one big thing also that I've always kind of felt as a reason that it's been relatively popular is that I this is a very sincere one for me is that my videos appeal to both car people and non car people. Mm-hmm. The greatest compliment I get when people come up to me on the street or when they email me is, "Hey, I'm not all that into cars, but I watch all of your videos." And to me, that's like, wow, if I can actually get someone into this, even though they're not into this, that is a proof that you're doing something right. And now a lot of really, really pure car enthusiasts who are really obsessed with especially mechanical stuff don't like me for that reason. I'm too generalist, they say. Um, But the result is that you get a bigger piece of pie. And I think that's why Top Gear was so successful too. You didn't have to be into cars at all to enjoy Top Gear. And in fact, it became the most popular television show on the planet. I think the more you were into cars, the more you would be able to pick apart Top Gear and complain about it. Yeah, that's exactly right. There's not not a ton of authenticity in that show, actually. But, you know, I can get, you you want, I put up a video on the Rolls Royce Phantom. People want to see that cars or not. They want to see those curtains, you know? Yeah. Like that's. That's something they're interested in, and I well, think that's a that's a big component. Because so many people aspire to own a Rolls Royce, even if they're not into exactly. cars, because it's a status symbol. Absolutely, and they I, think to themselves, "Why is that car a half million? What does that car have that my car doesn't have?" You know, well, that was then, that was some gold you you had when you were like, "This is why this car is worth this much money." I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the title's brilliant, but also it's like people go, yeah, why is that worth so much money? And they're going <laughs> to go click that and they go, what the fuck? What kind of door locks does this car have? Because my car has door locks right? too. Yeah, Ex- exactly. And that's the thought. It's like, wait a minute. This is this Rolls Royce is five hundred thousand dollars. That was a great idea, although I don't use those titles anymore. That that got played no, out. Now, you're, in a fucking, now you're showing off your titles. Now, every once in a while, I see when your titles and I go, oh, he's just showing off at how many <laughs> views he can make with this stupid ass title. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do get accused of clickbait, even still. Even no, with clickbait fairly- that doesn't end in a question mark is not clickbait, Doug. That's, <laughs> That's so true. I do get accused. Of- and so sometimes I'm just like, you know, the, the Porsche Cayenne is a $100,000 luxury SUV. Boom. You can't argue with that. That is not clickbait. <laughs> I, I know is. that's that's when I laugh and I go oh my god this motherfucker is gonna get a million views in this lazy ass title it's just fucking <laughs> let me just read off the fucking price tag in the title Doug no I I have to say though I did learn title right titles also did help my ascent and I did Zach, learn title writing booze, from working at Docker and and Jalopnik yeah and that was a component of it I, a lot of YouTubers had crappy titles and a lot of them still do and I look at a lot of people's titles and I'm like, if you just change this a little bit, you'd get 10% more. People. You know, I feel like actually, I feel like I shot myself in the foot with the titles. I feel like the one take thing, if you know what it is, you know what you're getting. But right. in terms of reaching new people, and actually, I think you hit on something that I just learned a lesson. I think you just taught me something, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you didn't just teach me something. I just think, like usual, you verbalized it in a simple sentence, which is that you found a thing that they want. Yeah. Whereas with my show, I am selfishly doing the thing that I want. You know what I mean? I'm, the yeah. thing that I do, I go out and I, I drive the cars and I talk about it and I am able to do it. I'm able to speak for f- 
16 minutes straight without sounding like an idiot while driving pretty quick. Right. That's like the thing I enjoy doing. And so I go and do it. And so, and yet you are going, well, what does the biggest group of people possible want to see? Well, but Doug, but Doug, do do you enjoy the the content you make? Like, is this what you, this seems like this is what you like about cars is knowing. It is. Like you're not, yeah. But, but there is a, there is some truth to that, and I'll give you an example. I when I did the C8, I was in Vegas like everybody else, and I, I got that car, and they gave one to me for six hours, and everyone else would have driven it for five hours and forty five minutes and just bombed around. I parked it in a parking lot for five hours and filmed it and didn't touch it, and didn't you not touch it, didn't move it because I was shooting all the little quirks and all the little here's what this button does yeah, and everything like that. Yeah. And I only got about forty minutes of driving. Um, but I figured everybody else was driving it, you know, and this is what I enjoy doing. So, yeah, you know, I'll drive it later, but I want to get the best content I can, the stuff that people really want to see up as quickly as possible. And so that was that that does happen at the Ford GT launch. I remember other people are out there going around the track and I was sitting in the parking lot showing the glove box release. Yeah. You know, but that did That's pretty the well. Job. Too, so. Yeah. You know, I think honestly, if I like even as as like you know we joke i like yeah i'm jealous of you i'm hating on you but like i love you you know what i mean and i'm proud of you and and i i don't think i would trade the job you have to do for your success for the job that i like to do right for the level of success i have i think that if i was at the 4 gt launch i'd right. be on the fucking track because right. I, because that the, because the experience of being invited to the launch and going on the track and getting every lap in that somebody provided me, to me would be, maybe that's selfish, but it would be more valuable than doing what yeah. you were doing, even if I, I knew your success was the other end. I don't think it's selfish at all. I think, I think that that's probably the correct way to, like, that's what all of our viewers would do, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably, yeah. But, I think Patton Oswalt said once, he's like, just make the com- make the art that you want to make and let the audience find you. So, you know, some people could go design their content to chase an audience style. And I think you were the first person I saw doing your style of video of like, here's everything to know about this car. And I've seen other channels kind no, of I saw start a, to follow form a little bit. I saw Saab Kyle do it before you did it, but not yeah. as well mm. and not and without without being as good of a, a, a character and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a personality as you. Yeah, no, offense, I mean, no offense to Kyle, by the way. No, and his stuff is a kind of a good example, though. Of he, the problem with Saab Kyle stuff, in my opinion, is that it's too. In de- it doesn't only. Sh- I, I try to focus only on the stuff that's interesting, whereas he shows everything. Now, yeah. I watch An when I'm buying a car. <laughs> I buy. I will watch a Saab Kyle video because it will show everything you need to know. But if you're not interested in the car, it's not that as in quite as engaging. Um, but it, to be totally clear though, this is the stuff that I enjoy. Like, like the G tab, like I was curious, how does the top work? How does the ridiculous rear end open? Like that kind of stuff. I do enjoy driving the cars, but I also, I'm always curious about solutions to problems that automakers encounter. And I'm always curious how, you know, there's a cigarette lighter in the new Corvette under the dashboard. What is that? That's so interesting. Et cetera, et cetera. Oh, it's that for, that's stuff, for radar really, detectors. It, well, and because they didn't have space for an actual, yeah. you know, and I just, that kind of stuff is the stuff that has always appealed to me. And I thought if I tried to do that stuff, maybe an audience would be interested in it too. And it turned out that there was a pretty big audience. And by the way, Matt, regarding the one take titles, the problem is you were in an unlucky situation because you blazed the trail for all of us. You were earlier than everybody. You didn't know at the time that titling the stuff like that was going to be a problem. And, but we all, we all got to play off of the people who came before us. And that's kind of a benefit that the rest of us have a little bit enjoyed kind of on your back and on the back of maybe stop Kyle and some other people who were like really early who like were the biggest people initially. And then you said, okay, well, how can we change this or whatever? Um, and by then it's, it's hard to change your situation because you've done a thousand of these videos yeah. and it's like, this is what they're titled. I literally is. have done a thousand actually. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that have done the best, actually, if I, if I'm going to toot my own horn at all and I beat myself up a lot for, for every little thing I don't do, but if I did something well, it was, I 
decided to make a lot of videos with cars that came out before YouTube. And so yeah. when a new car comes out now, a dozen people make a video yep. of it and it gets yours gets lost. But if you look up a 94 fucking Civic review, yep. you're getting mine. You know what yep. I mean? And, and 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 that I go back to videos that didn't do so well in the first week or two weeks. And I'll look back a couple of years later and go, whoa, you yeah. know, where that 700K come from? And so exactly. the, the tail is long. And that's the that's when you say, I mean, for you, it's it, I can't. The fact that you think that it could end at any time is very <laughs> funny because you have you have the same long tail I have, except even more. And yeah, and, but, and YouTube, unless, I mean, literally, unless the government breaks up Google, right, and or something like that happens and YouTube as a platform completely collapses, dude, YouTube is your pension, man. If you I mean, retired, yeah, not, you'd have a long tail. Ultimately, we're making car videos on the internet. There's no way this sustains. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no way. <laughs> Well, look, dude. So, like, I save every penny, and the cars I buy are very, like, don't lose any value. I can't convince myself to spend more than 40 grand on, like, a daily driver car. I just am terrified because, yeah, I get your point, but, like, and one of the interesting things, one one thing that actually does kind of annoy me with viewers is that people say to me, oh, you're making so much money, oh, you're rich, whatever, and it's like, I've done pretty well the last couple of years, no doubt, but this, I'm not a lawyer. This isn't a 40 year career. Yeah. You will not remember me in 10 years or YouTube or whatever. And I will have to be smart and transition to whatever platform comes next and make sure to stay on top of it with my content. And if I don't, I'll fall behind. And that has happened to many people. And that's the thing. This isn't like I went to law school and like, I'm now, you know, if one firm doesn't hire me, another one will. It's, it's, you got to kind of get while the getting's good. And yeah. that's scary, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, I am super privileged. I mean, not only am I white and male and, and, and I, I come from money, so I have uh, a, 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 a supportive family and all this other all this other stuff that, that a lot of people don't have. And so I, I am more privileged than fucking anybody. And, and, I'm, and I'm able to use that to do a pretty a fairly modest career honestly Tr fucking drive some cars build build one little building i mean it's not i'm not looking at world domination here um and and um and i not think with that attitude for, you know for you for other people that have been able to with with less uh, uh um to really really build something the one thing i have to i'll give you my my little bit of experience advice uh -oh. is it's like a casino you only win when you take your money and leave if you if you remain a slave to youtube yeah that's that is really the problem because no matter you can't you just can't be dependent on that and right. so that's, that is the issue and that's yeah. that's my biggest fear because i i don't know about you but i'm obsessive on tracking the numbers on on youtube more than i would guess most youtubers i never and was and that might be another reason you're so successful because you because you really study those numbers and i don't that might be why too i have embarrassing spreadsheets but i hit lulls. you know there will be and, and inexplainable lulls uh, there will be a period where a month will just have a month of bad views and there's no reason for it that cars are as good as they were last month it just is down that month and then it comes back and then it goes down again and then it comes back and it's weird. There's like a wave pattern to it. But regardless, um, in those times, I'm always thinking, is this the end? And you're right. You can't rely entirely on an algorithm that you don't know much about. YouTube is a fantastic platform and I am eternally grateful for it. But it's a little tricky to be able to, to base your entire life and your decisions yeah. and your house purchases and kids schooling and and everything on is this going to continue in a year or five years or 10 years 